Hi spider fans, welcome back to the Tarantula Cave. In this episode, we're gonna talk about tarantula sexing. The first step in sexing any tarantula is to soften the malt in water. Now, because tarantula skin is hydrophobic, which means that it repels water, it's very hard to get the skin to absorb the water unless you add washing up liquid to the water because that overcomes the hydrophobic qualities of the skin um, allowing it to absorb the water, making it soft so that you can use whatever tools you're going to use to manipulate the base of the abdomen to look for what you need to look for in order to check whether your tarantula is male or female. So here you can see I'm using a pair of cocktail sticks, all very high tech, to um, just make sure that the whole malt gets soaked, that it gets plenty of water into the skin, um, just to make that process easier. Next up, I'm going to soak another malt. This is my Nandu Colorado Velosis. Um, this is uh, the malt from that spider. And I'm just, again, using a pair of tongs to just submerge the malt and make sure that it gets nice and wet, um, just to make that process easier. It normally takes a few minutes just to get enough moisture into, um, into the skin so that you can actually move it around um, a bit of the abdomen uh, the skin from the abdomen broke off there, so I'm hoping that's not the bit I'm going to need in order to sex this tarantula. Uh, but yeah, it's just a case of leaving it to soak. You can leave it as long as you like, really. Um, there's no upper limit, but um, if you don't leave it long enough, then the skin might not be supple enough for you to do what you need to do in terms of sexing the tarantula. And once you're happy that the malt is soft enough, then you move on to the next stage, uh, which is basically laying out the malt on a board. I would normally use polystyrene, just a piece of a sheet of polystyrene, because that allows you to put cocktail sticks in and pin the legs out. Um, but I was being lazy, so I've just used a piece of cardboard just to prove that you don't need anything special. Um, and all I'm doing here is I'm taking the piece of Etheria regalis malt, placing it on the cardboard, and then Gently, gently, I'm going to move all the legs so that the legs are out around the malt because that's the easiest way to make sure it's flat. Um, I always like to make sure that all the legs are splayed out um, because then the body's not twisted or anything. And then you can look at the abdomen, which is obviously the bit you need to look at uh, to identify whether the tarantula is male or female. So yeah, this can take some time depending on how complete the malt is and how careful you are, and whether or not you handshake. Um, but normally it's not too bad, just quite easy. The, the, the most important is to get the back, the back two legs um, away from the abdomen to give you the most room to, to, to do what you need to do. So yeah, you can go, you can see all of the legs out, and then at the bottom of the, uh, the body, you've got the abdomen, the skin from the abdomen. And what we're gonna try and do is gently tease tease apart the base of the abdomen so it becomes flat. And you should be able to see um, what is effectively four white dots, four white patches. Um, and those patches are the book lungs. And then what I like to do to make things clearer is to slide a bit of white paper underneath. Um, so you can see the two front book lungs at the top and then the back two book lungs. Um, and then the, the bit we need to look at is between the, the, the top two book lungs. So here's a bit of a closer picture just to show you what it all looks like. And this is, this is it. So you get your um, macro lens um, once everything's laid out and you're just looking at the line between the top two book lungs for any kind of flap, basically the spermatheca, or if they've got two spermatheci of a female, which is where they store the sperm. Now, in this case, it's really obvious that there is no flap. There's no structure on the line between the front two book lungs, which means that my piece of theory regalis is a male. If you want to see more videos of tarantulas filmed in high definition, then all you have to do is subscribe and hit the bell icon. You can come along for the ride. Now let's move on to my Nandu Colorado Velosis. Again, just lay the malt carefully on whatever surface you're going to use, your board, your polystyrene, in my case, this piece of cardboard, 
and we're going to again use the cocktail sticks. I mean, if you have a dissection kit with proper pins, then obviously that's a bit nicer, but uh, you know, you don't need to have that. So I've always used cocktail sticks and it's always been fine. So here I am again, um, as I said before, just gently manipulating the legs outwards so that the body is flat, so that I've got the most space to work with at the abdomen level. Get the back two legs apart like that. And there we go. As you can see here, I've actually, unfortunately, the tarantula, when it molted, managed to tear its abdomen, um, the skin on its abdomen apart. So I've got very, very little to work with. And often when you've only got this much, it's almost impossible to sex the tarantula because of the tiny amount of abdomen left. You might have broken it at exactly the wrong point um, so that the piece you need to look at is missing. Um, in this case, I was quite hopeful that actually where the hole is in the middle of the um, in the middle of the skin that you see there, um, that is basically enough of um, enough of the abdomen skin left that actually you could see whether or not there were um, spermathesi for this species. Um, so I persevered trying to un unravel it. Um, it does get quite fiddly, so it does help to not have shaky hands. Um, and also, obviously, if you've got a microscope or something, that can make it a bit easier. But I can normally see fine to do this. But there's enough skin beyond the line between the book lungs to show me that there are no structures there again. So this spider is also a male. Now, I'm going to go on to show you the final um, species that I wanted to sex, and that was my uh, juvenile Salmopius eminia. And here you go. Here is um, a perfect example, if you like, of the spermathesi of Salmopius eminia. Those two little structures poking up from what is a semicircular flap. Um, that's exactly what the spermathesi of Salmopius eminia look like. Here they are again a bit closer, absolutely unmissable. When you've got a structure there, um, it's very easy to find, providing you've got a good enough macro lens or microscope and enough light to see what you're doing. Um, but this is great news. It means I now have two female Salmopius eminias. Hope you guys found that useful. Just important to remember that you can sex tarantulas a lot smaller than most people think. So if you've got small juvenile tarantulas, it's worth having a go to find out whether or not you can sex them because then you'll just know earlier, you can plan ahead. If you've got breeding projects and you need to get tarantulas of the other sex um, to make that happen, then you can do that earlier. Just worth bearing in mind. If you wanna know what to watch next, check this video out. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.